Hi everyone. If you have a toddler at your house you would like to potty train, this video is for you. This video is to inform you, to educate you, to get ready to potty train. Me, I have four children. Um, potty train was not difficult for me because I do have a method of potty training. With my first child, I potty trained him when he was 16 months. He wasn't fully potty trained, but he was started to be potty trained. We, every morning we um, take his diaper off. We take him to the bathroom when he's awake. And then uh, we kept doing that. By two years old, he was fully potty trained. My second child, a girl, she was a little bit harder. She didn't want to sit down. She didn't want to do that. At two year old, at two years old, I took the took the whole diaper off. I put her underwear on, and then I potty trained her three days. I did the three days method. It worked so well. My third child, I did the same thing that I did for my first son. I potty trained her. When she was 18 months, she wasn't fully potty trained, but she, um, at two years old, she was fully potty trained. I did the uh, at night time, that pull up, daytime. When she wake up, I take her to the bathroom, and then I let her wear, wear underwear in the morning. Sometimes she have accident. At two years old, she stopped having accident. She's three now, fully potty trained, underwear. My third child, he's two. He's more like my, he's more like my uh, second child. I've been, I've been teaching him when he was like 18 months. He haven't been getting, getting it. Um, he's wearing diaper in the morning. Um, when he wake up, I do take him to bathroom. Sometimes he come and tell me if he have to go, but he does have accident a lot. He's just turned to. I'm working, still working on potty train him. If you have a two year old, if you have, if you ready to potty train, please watch this video. This video have a lot of information you can learn and how to um, the sign that you're gonna learn all the sign. Um, if your child is ready to be potty trained, you're gonna learn um, what to do and what not to do because this lady gonna give you. Um, she's a professional. I know some um, some of us struggle with potty train. I struggle with potty train um, potty training my second baby, but I did even though I I felt like um I felt like she wasn't getting it because I didn't know every every kid was different. She was different. She wasn't ready. When she was ready at two, she she got it. My fourth my my fourth child. He's not ready yet. He's two. It's just taking time. I am going to do the three-day method with him. Um, I have been busy. I can't do it right now. But watch this video so you can learn some tip and trick to potty train your child. And I will give more updates if when I potty train, when I fully potty train my two. Thank you. Real talk. I don't know what parent out there needs to hear this, but if you are currently potty training and your child is refusing or is struggling with constipation or poop withholding, I have the best solution for you. Reading books is probably the number one thing that I recommend to parents as a peds occupational therapist in helping their kids learn how to navigate challenging situations. And I just came across a book written by a gastroenterologist from Mayo Clinic and it is perfect. The book is called Boo Can't Poo. If this is not the cutest thing you've ever seen, I don't know what it is. It is essentially a cute little story that follows around this adorable little ghost and he is struggling with constipation and it essentially is just helping kids learn healthy bowel habits in a fun, rhyming, silly, playful way. It has all of these really cute illustrations. It shows you how exercising helps move things along, how eating different healthy foods and fibers such as vegetables and fruits. As this is literally perfect. I have been searching for a good book to recommend to parents with children with constipation to just help them navigate this a little more. And this has literally answered all of my prayers. It even shows you how to properly position your child's feet. When I tell you guys that I bring this cutie little book with me to every single 
OT session that I work with kids with bladder and bowel dysfunction during. I'm not kidding. And the fact that this is published by Mayo Clinic Press, this is a medical book. Like, you know this is backed by science, which makes it so much better. And it's just gonna get them more comfortable with this situation when they can relate to another character that's similar to them and struggling with the same issue. When it's somebody else's struggle, it just makes it a little bit easier to cope with. This book, is going to be a game changer, I promise. If you're struggling with bowel and bladder dysfunction in your house with constipation and withholding, leave a comment here or send me a private message. I would love to help you go get this book. Here's how to be successful with potty training. I'm a pediatric occupational therapist and I help parents every day learn how to teach their child how to potty train. And what I'm about to tell you is what I have found to be the most successful consistently. You need to set aside three to five days where your focus is going to be on your child. If you work during the week, this might mean setting aside a weekend, taking a day off of work, or having your spouse helping you. You are going to give your child so much liquids, like so much, all day long. You know when you just like drink a little bit of water throughout the day and you never really have to like go, you never have like a big urge to go? But if you chug your entire Stanley cup within a half hour, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't hold it for one second longer. We want your child to feel that sensation of a full bladder. And you are going to consistently take them onto the potty every hour. Now, in the bathroom, I want you to use the actual toilet, but get a potty seat that has a step stool on it so that your child can be successful with getting on and off. And ideally a seat with some handles on it as well so that they feel really confident and like they're not gonna fall into the toilet. Don't want to force them to sit on the toilet for five to 10 minutes because that's not realistic. And after about one to two minutes, if they don't have to go, that's okay, we'll try again. Now the key here is your child is not going to be in a diaper or a pull-up. They are going to be in big kid underwear. That way, if they go to the bathroom, they are really gonna feel it. Pull-ups and diapers were meant to absorb for comfort for our children, which is great news if we're not trying to potty train. You can use a reward char or a sticker char if you feel like your child would benefit from that. But with this method, I really think that there's enough internal motivation to not feel uncomfortable from the underwear and to learn to be independent on the potty that they really shouldn't need too much external rewards. The other major key here is the consistency. You need to be fully ready and committed to this in order for the magic to happen. Follow me for more ideas. Potty training can be extremely overwhelming. If you are just starting out or if you've been on this potty training journey for a while and you are just can't seem to get it right, I'm Amanda, I'm a pediatric occupational therapist and I am here to show you five things that I always recommend to families implementing into their daily routines to help their child be successful with potty training. What if we spin? Wow. Let's talk about things I would never do if I were potty training a toddler as a pediatric occupational therapist. Like all things, some of the things that I mentioned in this video might have worked for you and your family or might be strategies that you were planning on using with your toddler when they got there. And that's okay. I'm here to educate on things that I personally would not do if I were potty training based on my experience, anatomy, and the science behind potty training. With that being said, let's dive in. Number one, I would never force a child to sit on the toilet for an extended period of time if they don't have to go to the bathroom, they don't have to go. Let's teach children to follow their own bodily cues. And if they sit down, they're there for 30 seconds to a minute, nothing happens, they don't have the urge, that's okay, we'll try again later. Number two, use a standard adult-sized toilet that doesn't have any kind of steps or potty seat around the top to provide them with proper foot support and balance for when they're going. It can be extremely scary for kids to be sitting on a giant hole that they're afraid to fall into and a lot of times when we're sitting on the toilet if we're wobbling all around it's really hard to focus on our business and doing what we need to do if our body is 
constantly worrying about being in an upright position. So I would typically recommend getting some kind of potty seat for your toddler. Number three, I would never ignore the signs of constipation. Moreover, I would not start potty training at all if my child was showing signs of chronic constipation. Getting to the root cause of the constipation, clearing the constipation, and working with a medical team if necessary, especially if they have had a lifelong struggle with constipation on figuring out what the root cause is and what's going on. Are there any allergies or food sensitivities? You know, do they need more water intake? What's going on with that? And then we can start addressing the potty training from then on. Oftentimes, potty training can be really challenging and for a variety of different reasons if a child is constipated. So if it were me going about this, I would overcome the constipation first and foremost and then move on to the potty training process. And number four, I would never punish a child for having accidents. Accidents happen and it is really important to help your child understand what happened, identify those cues in their body that they're feeling prior to an accident happening. You can have them help you in the process of cleaning up the accident, but there should not be punishments, in my opinion, when a child has an accident, especially naptime and nighttime accidents. It is fairly common for children to still bed wet up until five and six years old. I know you don't wanna hear it, but it can be really common for children still at that age. So punishments are a no-go for me when I am going about potty training. At the end of the day, parents, you know your child best. You know what works best for your child in your household. I am here to share valuable information and tips on things that I have found to be useful in my clinical experience. And if you are looking for more tips and ideas for your little one in this journey, follow me along for more. Potty training is something that all children can learn and they will learn it. And also some parents say, oh, my child is not ready for potty training because he's a boy or he's a girl. When your child turns two years old, your child is capable and able to learn to body train. You just need the time and um, patient. Body train will happen. You just have to sign the time up, sign, um, get everything ready so you can body train your child. Body train is a good, is help your child to have self love, self esteem, high self esteem. When a child is two, potty trained, and the child can go to um, preschool at three years old, it'll be easy. You don't have to worry. The stress can just, that would be a less, less stress you don't have to worry about. The child can be potty trained. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.